This is a brief introduction to T-Race technology, also called T-Race, and its applications to cultural heritage conservation and investigation. Let's start considering a typical Italian Renaissance painting. This will be made of at least three layers, paint, gesso and wood. If we want to perform a T-Ray investigation, we need two probes a T-Race emitter and a T-Race receiver. The T-Race emitter sends a T-Ray pulse, which reaches the first interface, air paint, let's say after one picosecond. The pulse is then bounced off and reaches the T-Race receiver after another one picosecond. A computer will display the T-ray spectrum with time in picoseconds on the x-axis and the intensity of the reflected T-rays on the y-axis. If zero is the instant the pulse is sent, the T-ray peak will show up after two picoseconds. One picosecond for the traveling forward the interface and one picosecond for the traveling backward to the receiver. The fraction of the pulse which is not reflected and not absorbed by the first layer goes through the paint layers and reaches the second interface. Paint gesso. Again, the same process takes place. Part of the pulse is bounced off, reaches the receiver and shows up as a new peak on the T-ray spectrum. If the pulse takes one picosecond to travel to the paint, then the new peak will show up after four picoseconds. Same process again to reach the gesso wood interface. If the pulse takes one picosecond to travel through the gesso, then the new peak will show up after six picoseconds. This T-ray spectrum becomes more useful if we switch to X-axis unit from time to space. One picosecond is one second divided one followed by 12 zeros. Speed of light is 3 by one followed by 11 zeros in millimeters on second. Then, in one picosecond, light and the four T rays travels 0.3 mm. We can therefore switch the x axis from time to space, and we have a spectrum which will clearly show the actual depth of each interface. This is a T rays application example which I developed while following conservation science at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Object conservators and curators of French furniture were studying five objects attributed to an 18th century French cabinet maker, Bernard van Riesenberg. All are decorated with European imitation lac, so-called Japanese, and lacquered parts of Asian origin. The question was, is it possible to tell what is original Asian lacquer and what is Japanese? Since its introduction through trade from Asia to Europe in the 16th century, lacquer ware was highly appreciated and soon became a valuable collector's item. It was quickly adapted to shapes usable in a European context. This adaptation first took place with the specific orders of European customers, being executed by the Asian lacquer masters. However, at the beginning of the 18th century, these imported lacquer objects went out of fashion, though lacquer itself stayed costly and precious. 
it was inevitable, inevitable that European cabinet makers started to reuse the lacquer objects by cutting the material into pieces and integrating them into, into their furniture. The high value also encouraged artisans to imitate Asian lacquer while using European materials. Fortunately, conservators had a mock-up of the Japanese lacquer, which we could use to test T-rays. We wanted to prove that with a T-ray scan we could detect, detect the lacquer substrate. Indeed, lacquer substrate could be textile, leather or bare wood. Conservators and curators were interested in a method that could tell them about the presence of the textile substrate. We brought the mock-up at the Z Omega laboratory in Troy, New York, where it was scanned with their T-ray system Mini Z. The mock-up shows each step of Japanese lacquer preparation from top to bottom. At Z Omega, we start collecting T-ray spectra for each step. Starting off with the bare wood, the corresponding T-ray spectrum shows only one peak, which is the reflection of the interface air wood. While the first layer of lacquer doesn't give any reflection interface detectable, this spectrum of the cloth clearly shows now two peaks, which are related to the new two interfaces. Air cloth and cloth wood. The application of a coarse sand layer adds a third peak to the spectrum, and the third interface and the three interfaces are now air coarse sand, coarse sand cloth, and cloth wood. The application of a coarse clay layer as a four peak and the four interfaces are now air coarse clay coarse clay coarse sand coarse sand cloth and cloth wood polishing and fine clay don't have detectable peaks while fine sand layers start to scatter the signal a bit Further polishing and the final lacquers do not add detectable peaks. And eventually this is the spectrum of the lacquer. Much more powerful than a single spectrum of a sport area is a scanning the surface to get tomographic view of the object. We scanned a 5 by 5 mm surface of the final lacquer with pixel spacing of 50 microns. The T-ray matrix data can be shown as a, an area image which is similar to a photograph and presents a top view image of the area that shows the intensity of the T-ray reflection at any desired depth. So, these images are obtained by extracting the intensity of the reflected T-ray pulses at a particular time delay or depth. Depth of 0 mm corresponds to the first reflection A lacquer surface. Then we can choose to visualize deeper subsurfaces such as 0.2 mm 0.3 mm, 0.4 mm and 0.6 mm. The only image that show a regular pattern is the one taken at 0.4 mm. We can compare it with a macro photo of the textile and it appears appears obvious that the dots on the T-ray image are spaced as the thread in the textile pattern. Therefore, the needle can be used successfully in detecting the textile substrate in lacquer.